What's the Fifty Valley Penguins? Today we're in 2003, number one on Sex and Traits and Chi Square. So here we're told that there's a phenotype of eye colors determined by a certain locus. Capital E is the dominant little, lowercase e is the rest of the little. We cross a wild type male and a white eyed female, and we end up with 45 white wild type female and 55 white eyed male. Then we cross the wild type and the white eye, and we get 23, 31, 22, and 24, approximately, as you see on the screen. So they want us to determine the genotypes of the original parents and explain my reasoning. So I see that all the offspring are either a wild type female or are white eyed male. And so that screams to me that it's sex linked because the male only has one X chromosome. So that one X chromosome will either have the dominant allele or the recessive allele. If it has the dominant allele, it shows the dominant phenotype. If it has the recessive allele, it shows the recessive phenotype. So I think that the white eye is a recessive trait. And so um, if we cross the uh, wild type male, so it would have a dominant allele with a white eyed female, and she would have both of her X's with a recessive allele on it in order for her to show that white eye. If I cross that, I end up with half of my offspring being carrier females, so they'll be wild type. And then the other half are um, white eyed males. And so I have a 50 50 shot, which approximately is what we see here. So if I was across the white eyed female, I'm sorry, the white eyed male and my wild type female, I would end up with a one to one to one ratio, okay, where I have um, one of them that is a carrier female looking wild type, one wild type male, and then I'll have one white eyed female and one white eyed male. So this matches what we saw here in our F1 cross, or yeah, F1 cross F2 generation. So as you see, we have the genotypes of the parents. We discussed and showed how uh, we got the F1. We talked about how it was sex linked and we knew how it was dominant. And then of course we showed the F2 results. That's how you could have gotten your new points. So the student says genotype original parents are X, E, X, E for the female and X capital E, Y for the male. The trait is sex linked. They carried on the X chromosome. The female's homozygous recessive for white eyes, while the male has a single dominant gene. The validity of the genotypes can be seen with a Punnett square. And then they drew the Punnett square. In the F1 generation, half the offspring are females heterozygous for wild type eyes, while the other half are males with all white eye genes. So next thing you have to do is a chi-square. Now, chi-square is one of the things that's on our science practices, so I want to make sure that we did talk about chi-square. So there's four different phenotypes we could have with this F2 generation. We could either have the wild-type male, which had 23, the wild-type female, which had 31, the white-eyed male, which was 22, and the white-eyed female, that was 24. So you're going to add all these numbers up, and that equals 100. So when we want to go to our expected, we go and we think about, okay, when we were looking over here, we saw that when we did that cross, I ended up with a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one ratio between all the different phenotypes. So that's what I would expect. I would expect one-fourth of each of these to be there. So I take 100, which is my total, and I multiply by one-fourth, and I will get 25 for all of these, which matches that one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio that we saw in our Punnett square. So for this column right here, I'm going to do the observed minus the expected. So 23 minus 25 gives us negative 2. 31 minus 25 gives us 6. 22 minus 25 gives us negative 3. 24 minus 25 gives me negative 1. So I will then square those numbers. So that will give me 4, 36, 9, and 1. And when this uh, question was given, the students didn't get calculators. So I want to show this to you, assuming we don't have calculators. So we would do 4 over 25, because we're going to do our observed minus expected squared over my expected. So 4 over 25, 36 over 25, 9 over 25, and 1 over 25. And when you add those numerators together, you'll get 50 over 25, which equates to 2. So we need to analyze this chi-square. So we're going to use our table value. And since we have four different phenotypes, we say, okay, well, 4 minus 1 gives my degrees of freedom of 3. So I'm comparing my calculated value of 2 to 7.82. Well, my value of 2 is less than 7.82, and my probability of 0 0.05 degrees of freedom 3. So I will say that I'm going to fail to reject my null hypothesis, okay? Fail to reject is the terms that we would use on this because of the fact that we can't really accept the hypothesis, but we can fail to reject it. If my number had been larger than 7.82, I would have rejected the null. But since my number is less than the table value, I fail to reject. So that is what you could have put. Here's all your points. The student wrote, expect the genotypes. The F2 are shown in the Punnett square. They show you the Punnett square. Wild type female, wild type male. 
um, white-eyed female and white-eyed males should show up in equal proportions, one to one to one to one. Thus, it is expected for 100 individuals, uh, generation F2, 25 individuals should show each of the phenotypes. This would be the expected count for each term in the X in the chi-square test. They then show you the math, and then they show you where their degrees of freedom come. That is a statistics row minus one, columns minus one. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if I can explain it to you um, because I don't understand that one myself. So if someone wants to comment and tell us how we got the rows minus one and the columns minus one and how that tells us our degree of freedom, that would be amazing. The critical value we got was uh, 0 0.05 significance and our chi-square was 7.82. So since our observed statistic of two is less than this value, it can include the observed phenotypes do not vary statistically significantly from the expected counts of each phenotype. The proposed phenotypes of each generation and the proposed pattern of the inheritance sex link are statistically affirmed to be true. Okay. Oh, I forgot that line. So C says that the brown-eyed female is resulting from a mutational change. Explain what a mutation is and discuss two types of mutations that might have been produced. So mutation is just a change in the DNA. So there's some type of change in your genetic material, and that change is going to lead to a difference in the protein, and that different protein then leads to a different physical characteristic. So the different mutations we can have, of course, would be point mutations where there's a change in a single point, frame shift mutation where there is a deletion or an insertion that causes the shifting of that reading frame or the reading of the three codons at once, insertion, transposition where something moves to another spot, breaking, inversion where it comes out, rotates, come back in, base substitution where one base is substituted for another base, nonsense or a stop mutation or a missense mutation. Um, nonsense is where we're going to see a... Uh, codon that gets switched out from an amino acid to a codon that codes for a stop codon. Missense is going to be one that codes for an amino acid, codes for a different amino acid. You couldn't have talked about chromosomal. You can't talk about non-disjunction. You can't talk about transcription or translation. You can't talk about molecular errors. So the student went on and they had this big, long response. Mutation is a change in the genotype of a, or the DNA of an individual. A mutation, depending on what type it is, may or may not be reflected in the phenotype of the individual. In this case, mutation was reflected in the brown-eyed phenotype of one individual in the generation F1. This could have been the result of base pair substitution or an inversion. A base pair substitution would have occurred the DNA replication of the individual in which a single wrong base would have been substituted for the correct one. For example opposite a guanine, a adenine may have been placed in the complementary strand instead of cytosine. This case, substitution would have changed a single codon, three consecutive base pairs. So that it began to code for a single amino acid, which would have changed the resulting protein. The amino acid is incorporated into the eye color. Thus, the eye color would have changed. In an inversion, the sequence of base pairs would have been inserted in the DNA, inverted in the DNA sequence. For example, GCATTG would have been changed to GCTTAG. This inversion would have led to the change in one or more codons, resulting in production of a different amino acid than normal, resulting in a protein brown eye whew, for rather than the typical wild type or white. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Biopenguins address success. Bye, y'all.